Some DJs are even. But here's a little something about my DJ. The magnificent Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. Jeff Towns, DJ Jazzy Jeff. My instrument would have been drums, would have been a bass, but it turned out to be the turntables. You know, me starting to play records at a party, it wasn't just playing records. It's like, okay, now I got two records and I got a break that's four bars long and I got to keep going back to back with this break in order to lay the foundation for this MC to rhyme off of. And then I got eight bars to take this record off, put another one on and find another break and continue it over. It's, it, it turned into an instrument. When people shook their head and didn't understand it, you know, you don't have to understand everything. This is my instrument. This is my you know, this is how I create music. I think more than anything, instead of looking at what I attributed to the art of DJing, I, I'm happy that cats are still doing it. It's kind of like, you know what? All right, it's cool. If, if Grandmaster Flash was my dad and I was the son, and then all of a sudden I had a kid, now he's a grandfather. You know, I'm a great grandfather now, and he's a great, great grandfather. I just want the generations to keep going on and just keep it, you know, and keep it alive because the, the 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 bigger they keep it going, the bigger my legacy can be after I'm gone. I kind of got a little disgruntled with the music industry and just how it was going and the direction that it was going, um, and just wanted to be able. You know, I've always said in the opportunities that I had. To, to do a record that the only way I was going to do it is if I could do it pretty much on my own terms. Um, and it wasn't about necessarily what the industry expected. It. You know, well, you know, you got to make sure that you have this person and this person on it because if you do that, then it's going to sell. Or you have to make sure that you have this kind of record and this kind of record because if you do that, it's going to sell. You know, I've always believed that um, especially artist-driven albums should be a signature from the person who's working on it through BBE and you know having someone that will come to you and just basically say Jeff I want you to make an album that makes up you no holes barred you got it call me when it's done you know you don't get that from any record company now so for them to give me that opportunity it was a no-brainer Pauly Ann's Pauly Ann's has been um, one of the most respected MCs in Philadelphia for years. Proud to tell her I'm a Mac, but Angel thinking she hot. So all I do is DNG out the paper she got. Had a job work at Tiffany up at the mall. Plus a man named Armani heard he looking for Paul. You know, but Paul quit. You know, he went, got a nine to five job, you know, settled down with his girl and his kids and was just like, I'm done. You know, and it was amazing to me. Like, wow, the industry has gotten so messed up for you that you just said, I'm not going to do what I love the most. Um, and I basically almost had to beg him to, you know, come on, Paul, come down. You know, I got him down the studio, got him on the mic. You know, he still had tons and tons of stuff, you know, and I just kind of made him understand that I'm trying to take a different path. You know, I'm trying to take the path that you miss and that I miss. Eight, nine, my mom bought me Technique 1200s, man, I'm trying to DJ like ten. Drum machines like 12, 14. Wrote my first round like March 10th, 1983, because I dated the paper. You know what I'm saying? So Black has been around for a long time. Black has been on a, a bunch of really big underground records and has, you know, a really good rep on the underground scene. But another one that went to college and was an English major and knows how to use words and is, you know, you know, Black is straight from the street. And it was just kind of like, you know, to me, Black is hip hop. I met Chef about seven years ago, Chef's from Detroit, um, and just his energy. It's like when Chef first came down, Chef came in the studio and I had a band in the room, um, and they just put him in the room with the band, and he got on the mic and he had a big giant Afro wig, and Chef must have rhymed for about an hour and a half straight. We talked about everything, very intellectual. You're a young man, they sell you on sex. As you become an old man, they got you twisted up in sex, and you f around, fall in love, and end up needing sexual therapy. And then at that point, you either go left or right, and one is counseling, the next is the porno And try to expand your repertoire, and you just be caught in the matrix. 
Because love is love. And if you love the person for the right reasons, the sex will be good because of that. B was signed to Electra Records about nine years ago, eight years ago. We did an album on V, um, signing to Electra. And he might have been a little bit before his time. It was kind of like, oh, we're not feeling that. We don't like that. We think, you know, we want something different. Um, and he kind of got disgruntled. And he left and, you know, went off and just ended up getting a job and just wanted to get away from music. Um, and it was just ironic that, you know, about five years later, I hooked up with Jill and we did almost the same kind of record and it just blew up. Cy Young introduced me to Raheem, which, um, Raheem, it was really amazing to meet somebody that was on the same stuff that we were on and we never met him. You know, Raheem was um, very talented, very spiritual. Um, a lot of the lyrics that he wrote um, really were reflective, made you think about a lot of stuff. He's very, very reminiscent of Marvin Gaye. I seen streets where youth are forced to take the long way home. And I've seen the mothers mourn the loss of their only born. But still, I believe we are given nothing more than we can bear. Our vision is only slurred. Um, and it was a no brainer with Eric. You know, I've been working with Eric for years. Eric, you know, used to write songs, you know, for a lot of the cats that used to be at a touch of jazz. <clears throat> So it was the same thing, you know, it's like, yo, I'm doing this record, and, you know, you almost don't even have to ask Eric, you know, you know he's gonna be on it. Amazed to find someone so fine, up in here alone, I feel I'm about to lose my mind. Just gonna spend the evening with my crew, I had no idea I would run into the likes of you, but dance floor is so tight, someone like the way Jill is probably the purest and truest artist that I've ever worked with. We did the re remake of We Live in Brooklyn, and it was just great because everybody that was on that track was from Philly. You know, the string arrangement was written by Larry Gold, who pretty much did a lot of the Philly International strings, you know, for Gamblin' Huff back in the day, you know, from bass with uh, Pat and keys with Pete and guitar by Chuck Trees. Everybody is from the Philadelphia area. A Touch of Jazz is like a big, giant musical playground, and I've always wanted it like that, that, you know, once you have a relationship with cats musically, just let them come and go as they choose. Um, because you never know. I mean, cre to me, creativity can't be on the clock. I had the idea for For the Love of the Game for about a year and never did it. And it was so funny because I ended up programming a beat in about 15 seconds, just a basic beat. And I found a sample and I kept hitting the sample. And Ken Wood came in and was just like, wow, that's hot. You know, and I just flew it in and just kept it going. And um, another guy, Pat, just went in the other room and grabbed the bass and just plugged the bass up. And he started playing the bass. And I was like, hold up. And I just laid the bass straight down. And it was funny because there was no structure to the song at all. It was just, you know, okay, let me, let me loop the beat for 40 bars. And he just played the bass straight down. And then another guy, Pete, just came in and was like, yo, you know, can I get on it? And he just sat down and started playing the keys. And then Paul walked up the hall and he opened the door and he was just like, wow, for the love of the game. And him and Black just sat down and wrote it. And it was like, I sat there and I wrote the hook out and, and sat with V and was just like, V, you know, sing this, sing this. And it was like, it was amazing that in about 15 minutes, we pretty much had the whole idea in the body of the record. But to me, I think that record probably constitutes what this album is about more than anything. Love what you do and do what you love. I'm 37 and been professionally in the music industry for over 20 years. I'm not old by no way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Barry Gordy started Motown at 37. I'm like, <laughs> damn. You know what I mean? You know, I can't be looking at like, oh, it's about time for me to start wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, nah. You know, I'm 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 gonna be nonstop. I'll be 57 DJ. From the thugs of years, since the game, yo. 